And we are back on the Zero Hour. You know, thinking more about the terrible incident in Paris and the death of the writers for uh, Charlie Hebdo, I really think this is a moment for reflection for all of us. It's very easy for everyone to fall into a reflexive response to a tragedy like this. And here's what I mean. Now, uh, there are those, as we discussed with Eric Bollert, there are those on the right who are using it as one more opportunity to attack Muslims, Islam, Democrats, liberals, all of that thing as somehow being soft on terror. Although I would argue whatever their other faults, Democrats have been much more effective, I would argue, in managing uh, the fight against terror. Uh, but there, that's partisanship and a, a healthy dose of uh, racism thrown in as well. But yeah, I've been a little disturbed by the commentary on uh, the left side of the spectrum, too, I have to say. Some of it, not all of it. And here's what I mean. Uh, I've been told by a lot of people that the writers at Charlie Hebdo were upholding liberal values and that before that, the writers at that Dutch newspaper that published the uh, Mohammed cartoons were upholding liberal values and that we must stand. I am Charlie and all that. Well, listen, this is a tragedy. It's a complicated issue. It has many sides to it, but am I Charlie? That's what I started to think about. Is this really, whose liberal values are we talking about here? You know, everything doesn't have to be black and white. Everything doesn't have to be one way or another. When people say, I am Charlie, here's what, je suis Charlie. What, what, what concerns me a little bit about it, it's two things. One, I've got to be blunt to my fellow uh, progressives. It sounds a little vain. You know, not every tragedy on this planet has to be about you. It may be that while these innocent people uh, died horribly as a result of a barbaric act, they are not you and you are not them. It is possible that they did so for reasons and due to conflicts you and I, perhaps, have yet to fully understand and should be willing to learn more about. So here's what I mean by that, for example. If you go to Paris, you will see that the uh, Muslim minorities there live in dreadful ghettos called banlieues. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it exactly right, but this, these people are despised by many uh, white-skinned, true, quote-unquote, Frenchmen uh, across the political spectrum from left to right. There's a lot of prejudice. There's very little opportunity. There's a lot of conflict. Now, whenever someone starts going down this path, someone else, often a quote-unquote liberal, a new republic-type liberal, if you will, is eager to say that that person, meaning me, is number one, abandoning the principles of free speech, and number two is uh, somehow excusing terrorism. I have to say, I've explained myself on that position many times, I uh, wholeheartedly condemn terrorism. If you say that to me again, I have two reactions. One is, how dare you? And two is, uh, now who's suppressing whose freedom of speech? Aren't I allowed to say that, for example, this situation may be a little more complex and nuanced than what you think? Uh, let me give you an example. Rabbi Michael Lerner, who is a terrific force for good in this world, wrote a piece called Mourning the Parisian Journalists, yet noticing the hypocrisy. Now, what did Rabbi Lerner mean by this? Uh, He meant that he noted that when Muslims were involved in an attack of terror, it got very different coverage than when other people were involved in an act of terror and was being exploited for political purposes. I don't want to speak for Rabbi Lerner. We'll try to get him on the show. But that's the gist of what he is saying. Now, the Rabbi Lerner has spoken out against attacks on Israelis. He's spoken out against attacks on Palestinians. He is even-handed. We need to be even-handed about this. Not every victim of violence is someone whose every move we emb- embrace. Now, I read all of as many as I could of the Charlie Hebdo uh, Muslim-related cartoons. They, uh, some, a couple actually I thought were told a good point. Uh, one showed the uh, Prophet Muhammad about to be beheaded by an ISIS uh, terrorist, and he's looking up at, 
at him and saying, uh, you know, I'm the prophet. So, you know, that's actually a powerful message that that the uh, preaching of Muhammad is being violated uh, by the, these people who are also killing fellow Muslims. OK, yeah, but they did some offensive stuff, too. And I don't think that all the people saying I am Charlie would embrace everything they did. For example, they did a cartoon of the the 12 year old girls kidnapped by Boko Haram, all pregnant and saying, in effect, and I translate loosely, where's my welfare check? Now, I don't think that's funny. I don't think it's tasteful. And people say, well, you don't understand um, the French culture. This kind of outrage is an essential part of the French culture. Maybe. But that's why I'm not Charlie, because I don't understand it and I don't really get it. So can't we say, for example, that we don't have to embrace everything uh, those cartoonists did, and yet we are horrified by a society in which they can be killed? So, look, we don't just defend satire for satire's sake. The Ku Klux Klan wrote satire. Everybody writes satire. We can say, look, you're using your freedom of speech here in a way that is, as someone put it, white people punching down at the less privileged. I don't really smile on that. But nobody deserves to die for what they did. Can't we hold two truths in our head at the same time. Last note about uh, uh, Charlie Hebdo. A couple of years ago, uh, they uh, published a very offensive, uh, b- 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 quite offensive, I thought, joke about uh, Jewish people, and uh, the person who wrote it was fired. So there is a double standard at play here. And now, of course, our, our goal should be to end hatred wherever it happens. As, as I am broadcasting this, uh, innocent people are being, were just killed, in, as, as we understand it, in a kosher supermarket in Paris. Can't we bring this to a stop? Can't we realize that it's wrong to hate anybody? It's wrong to mock any minority. It's wrong to hurt anybody for what they think, what they believe, what they do. And that includes satire that I may not personally care for. Just think about it, and I'll keep thinking about it too. I'm Richard R.J. Eskow, and this is The Zero Hour.